Okay. Maybe now we're live. Yes, awesome, all right. So I think we are now live. So if you can see me and hear me okay, just type over there in the chat. Sorry for the delay. I'm still learning this uh, YouTube Live and getting everything going here. So hello, Catherine, Paul, Nuja, Dylan from cold and windy St. Paul. Mm, sounds cold. <laughs> yeah, so welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me here today. Awesome, thank you, Paul. Glad that you can hear me. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Uh, yeah, so anyways, jumping on here with YouTube Live today. This is my first time doing this on YouTube Live, so we're going to work out a, a few of the kinks, and you guys get to be my crash test dummies along with me here and uh, help me with, with this. And of course, I'm going to share my screen today, and we're going to talk about this data cleansing challenge that I presented last week uh, in a blog post and video. So I will be jumping over to Excel, and we'll take a look at Excel and how we can go about this problem of converting text to dates. Very common problem. We had over 100 uh, comments on the blog and YouTube channel with different solutions to this. So I kind of grouped those into four major categories, and we'll take a look at how to go about this problem, because it's not an easy problem to solve in Excel, uh, especially with the way our text or our date that was stored as text is set up here in this example. So. Hey, Elaine, Monique, awesome. Thank you all for joining me. Great to have everyone here. Hey, hey, Jim, how's it going? Uh, Jackson from Tanzania, awesome. Welcome, welcome everybody. Great to see you all. Yeah, so it's uh, 9 a.m., so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna jump over into Excel here. Let's see, there we go. So we can jump into Excel. Let's turn that guy off. And we'll take a look at this challenge. Now, I did update uh, the blog post with the uh, latest file that you can download. And I should probably put that, let's see if I can throw that in the uh, comments as well so you can take a look at that. Oops, I wanted that page there. Let me just put that in the comments for you so you can uh, grab that file if you want to use it and follow along. So here we go. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. So let me put that in the comments. There, there we go. There's a link, it's flying by. There's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of comments flying by, but there is the link to it. And uh, hopefully you can, yeah, you can get grab that. There's a new download file there that you can uh, grab and follow along uh, with the training that we're gonna go through here today. So let's jump into this here. There we go. So again, there was a ton of comments that came in about how to go about this problem, and we're looking at how to convert this text to dates. Let me zoom in a little bit on our, there we go, you should be able to see this a little better. So we're in this uh, cell or column A right here, we have this uh, text, well it's really date that's stored as text, and we need to convert that to a date in Excel. So Excel can recognize it, we can use it uh, for pivot tables and, and uh, uh, sorting and all kinds of things like that. So if we have dates in those columns, uh, Excel recognizes those, it groups, as a, groups them as a date and all that kind of stuff. In a column A where we have text, uh, obviously it's not recognizing that as a date. And this becomes a problem uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, like I just said, it's just not a date value. So the challenge is to convert this. And I presented one way in the video using flash fill. Uh, that's definitely one way we can go about it. Uh, but as a few people commented, it didn't really work if we had more than one year in uh, the data set. So I'll jump over to this flash fill tab. And uh, really what we can see here in column B, I, I just added some different years. So here's 2016 in the first uh, six cells there, and then 2017. And when we did that, when we had different, two different years or multiple years in the data set, uh, my technique didn't really work. You can see that it's showing March 14th, two, year 2000, and uh, it doesn't really bring the year over very well. So and you can go back and watch the video. I won't explain that one again, how we did flash fill. I won't do that one over again because I explained it in the video. Uh, but basically, it's not really working. So one thing we can do, and, and a suggestion that was mentioned, is to just use uh, another column to bring the date in, use flash fill in the date. So if we were to just delete that entire column, we can actually type the year here for the first cell, which would be this year right here in cell A2 and hit enter. And then we can use flash fill, it's on the data tab of the ribbon uh, right over here, there's flash fill button right there. 
and click flash fill and that'll fill down our dates. It's going to extract that, uh, or fill down the years I should say. It's going to extract that year uh, from every cell in column A over here and then bring it into column C. So we can still use flash fill and we do have the month and the day here in column B. Those are correct. Uh, so we can then combine it and I did that over here in column E. So there's a formula here in column E that's just using the date function to combine the year, which is in cell C2, and then the month. So we're using the month function to get to pull out the month from this date. So that would return March in this case, or month number three, and then the day. So this day function would return the day, which is a 14, and we're feeding all of that into the date function right here, and all that will return our date. And then at the end of it, we're just adding the timestamp uh, right here. So we're plus D2 to add the time, and that'll give us our full date and time in that date value. So that's how that's uh, working there. Okay, let me just check my comments real quick and uh, make sure. Uh, it's, can everyone see the screen? Some people are saying they can't see the screen, so I just wanna make sure everyone can see the screen and hear me okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Amy. Great. Okay, so let's let's jump uh, jump on here. Okay, cool. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. So I get my chat going out here, so I can see you guys. Great. Okay, cool. So another way to go about this and and uh, is with formulas. Uh, that's another really popular technique. That probably the most popular one that came through on the uh, on the blog and on the comments is using formulas to extract the date. And there's different ways to go about this, different types of formulas we can use, and a lot of that depends on what region you're in. So if you're in the U.S., and I'm in the U.S., so uh, the, the technique you can use might be a little simpler because this date does contain uh, the text-based, or kind of this text-abbreviated month right here. So we see March, June. If you're in a, in a non-English speaking country and your regional settings are set to that, then Excel's not going to necessarily recognize M-A-R is the month of March. And same with all of these here. Oops, sorry about that. Same with all of these abbreviated month settings. So that can uh, factor into this. And if you're sending your file out around the world, uh, that can factor into this as well. Because if, if you are in the US, but you're sending your file to someone that's in the UK or Australia or a non-English speaking country, uh, then you will want to plan for that when you're doing this type of conversion uh, with, with uh, text to dates. So I have a few columns here, and again, you can download this file, uh, but I have a few columns here with different formulas uh, based on some of your, your feedback and responses. So the, probably the most simple one here is uh, the just this function right here, this combination of functions to using the mid function to extract out uh, the text from the uh, from this cell A2 right here. So we're extracting out the month is what this uh, first part of this mid function is doing. It's going over uh, five characters. Actually, this is extracting the month and the date. So it's going over five characters and extracting the first seven characters from the five characters. So it's extracting March 14, and then we put that comma in there, and then combining that with the write function to combine that with the year. And that's going to give us the date. So it'll say March 14th, comma, 2017. And then we're using the mid function again uh, to pull out the timestamp. So we're adding the timestamp there to the date. So that's how we get both of those uh, components for the date and time. And that's what this is returning here. Now I've left this as the general number format. Of course, we can convert this like I explained in the video. Uh, we can convert this to a date and time format. Just right click here, format cells, and then we can go here and choose a date uh, time format. Oops, you're probably not seeing that. Yeah, if we choose a date and time format, make sure we're seeing all that okay, yeah. Uh, like one of these date and time formats here, here's one with the date and the time, hit okay, and that'll show the date and time format right there. I just left it as the number format so we can easily see if this is returning the correct value and if these values match uh, between all of these different formulas. So I wanna see if the date values match there. 
So next one is, uh, let's see, next one is this date value function. So this is going to work if uh, your English is the language you'll probably be using across the board, but you're not in the US. So UK, Australia, and any other countries that are speaking uh, or using English as the, the language, uh, but not necessarily an English speaking country. We can use this date value function. And it's really going to do a very similar thing there. Uh, we're just using the date value function to convert that text into a date. So it's still going to return uh, the month. Uh, well, this one's actually returning the day first, then a dash, then the month name, and then the year. So combining that, so again, it would look something like, if we just go over here, it would look something like 14-March-2017. That's what that, uh, that formula is going to return. And then the, it, that's wrapped within the date value function. So that date value function uh, looks for text like that and will convert it to a date value. Uh, so if you're in a non-English or non-US country, that will work, that date value function. And then we also had a great one. I forget, I should have put whose name uh, posted this. There's actually a few that posted a response similar to this one. Uh, but if you're in a non-English speaking country altogether, then uh, this formula here will work outside of the US. And what it's doing, let me see if I can, uh, what it's doing here, let's see, there we go. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see all that. Let me uh, pull back a little bit here and there, you should be able to see all that now. So hopefully you can still see the formula. Uh, also right below, if you're on YouTube, and uh, right below the video on the right side, there is a little theater mode. It's like a little square, a little rectangle you can press kind of within the video player right under the timeline there, uh, right next to that gear icon. And that'll make the screen a little bigger, a little easier to see. So if you're having a tough time seeing the screen, click that little theater mode icon and that'll make the screen a little bigger. Uh, so here we have a, uh, another, another example of this using a formula, and this is using uh, the date function to again extract all those components of our date. We're extracting the year here, and then for the month, uh, we're really kind of doing a lookup formula. So uh, we're taking the month letters, which in this case is M-A-R for March. That's what this mid function does. It extracts those month letters. And then it does a lookup here in this list or this array of values right here. So this is all the months. Because again, if we're in a non-English speaking country, uh, Excel's not going to recognize any of those values as months. So we need a different way to go about this. And this is one way we can do it where we can actually do the lookup all within the formula using this array of values here that's uh, in between these curly brackets. Then we have uh, quotation marks around the month name and then commas separating the months there. So it's really just creating a list uh, very similar to what you would see in a list of cells within a sheet, uh, but it's just here within the formula. And so that uh, function there, that match function is going to look up that value and return the number that it finds. So if it finds March here, so if the lookup value, which is this value right here, is March, and it's going to find March in this list and return the number three because that's the third item in the list. So that'll return the month number for us. And then uh, here, we just uh, have the day as well, or the day number, and uh, for again, for that day, or that date function. So we get the day number right there, and then uh, that'll return the date, and then we're adding the time value after it. And so that'll give us our date and time. So that's another way to go about it. I kind of titled that as regional independent because it doesn't matter what region you're in, that will work, uh, that'll also work. Yeah, so, and then finally, we have the uh, replace function here. This is US only. This was, I'm, uh, I forget who ever submitted this one as well, but this is another good kind of uh, cool or uh, tricky option, I thought, on how to use the replace and substitute functions uh, instead to just kind of change the order of this date around is really what it's doing. It's getting rid of the uh, CDT, the time zone, and then moving 2017 after uh, March 14th there, and then Excel recognizes this as a date. So another kind of cool way to go about it, you can step through that function and check it out. Uh, but again, that one's only gonna work in the US. So uh, let me just check my comments here. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, great to see you all.
Cool, thank you, Catherine. Okay, so next, uh, well, before I go on, I wanna explain a little bit more about these formulas and how you can step through these and also how you can uh, test for the different regional settings. Because if you are in the US and you're sending your files uh, to other countries, you might wanna test to make sure this works before you send it out. So one way we can do that is uh, change the regional settings. And we actually do that through uh, Windows settings. So it's a, not necessarily settings within Excel, but settings on Windows. So you can open the control panel. Uh, if you just select the start menu here, down in the bottom left corner, hit the, the Windows button on the keyboard, and then type control panel. Just type, start typing control panel. And that'll open, and then open the control panel, obviously. And then over here within the control panel in the main window, you should see this change date, time, and number formats option. That option right there. Uh, just click that, and that will open up this window right here. Let me see if I can get into this window, make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. So you'll see this window uh, right here. And right here on the format, we can choose any country, and language and country, really. So if, right now I'm on English United States. And let's, let's just go up one to English United Kingdom. So I'm gonna uh, select that and move this out of the way and we'll see what happens. When I hit the apply button right here, select that, we can see in the background that the um, workbook recalculated and we're getting some errors. We're getting some error values uh, here in column B because again, this formula only works in the US. Uh, in column C, this one's still returning a date and time value, same with column D, and then column E, we're getting errors. So that's a good way to just do a test, is just go into those regional settings within Windows and change uh, the format to a different country. And of course, we're still in English. Uh, if we did something totally different, let's do Filipino and apply that. Uh, we're getting some, we can see here, we're getting some errors in uh, columns B, C, and E for sure. Uh, D though, column D, we have that regional independent, that one that should work no matter what, and it is working. We can see we're getting uh, results there. So that's a good, good way to go about that. Uh, just change the regional settings there. And uh, let's go back to US, and then we'll hit apply, and that'll allow us to test that. So again, um, Pretty easy to do, but really will help when you're sending this file to someone else. Because otherwise, you might send it to someone in a different country, and then they open it up and they get errors. And that one error in column B uh, could break your entire model, right? They open it up, they're getting an error, and it really just breaks the whole thing and nothing's working now. So that's a good way to test. Uh, and, and then another thing I want to just share real quick is uh, how to evaluate these formulas. So we looked at these formulas here and I kind of explained the mid, the right, and the mid functions, and then this one uses the date value function as well. And we can actually step through these formulas and see how they're working. So if we, if we go to, to the uh, formulas tab, and then, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, you can see this. Right over here on the formulas tab, and you can probably barely see that, but there's an evaluate formula button uh, keyboard shortcut is Alt-T-U-F. And uh, here we'll bring up the Evaluate Formula window and we can actually step through each step of the formula. So right now, it might be hard to see, but this A2 is underlined. That's kind of the first step that the, the formula is going to evaluate. And you can hit the space bar on the, or on the keyboard or you can hit the Evaluate button right here and that will just evaluate each step of the formula. So we can now see that this mid function, it's all underlined here, is looking at our date in cell A2 and it's going to return, uh, starting in the ninth, uh, character, return the first two characters there. So that's what we get, we get a 14. And then it's gonna join it with that dash. So we hit, sp I'm hitting space bar again. And now we have this text here that's 14 dash. Then it's gonna look at A2 again. And if I hit space bar, it's gonna return March. And then uh, we'll hit space bar again, the dash, and space bar again. And it's gonna look at uh, the right four characters of cell A2 and return 2017. So that's exactly what I get there. I'm hitting space bar and now I get my date value and it's going to evaluate this text and say, is that a date? And then I'll, if it is, Excel will convert it to a date. So that's a good way to kind of look at this, especially once you come across some kind of complex formula. 
uh, just evaluate it and see how it's step through each step and see how it's being evaluated and that'll help you uh, understand the formula a little better. And then you can continue to hit a uh, space bar there to evaluate all the way through. So really what we're getting again, here's our, our date value, uh, which is the number of days since January 1st, 1900. We're adding the time value to that and that gives us this uh, date value with the decimal number. So that's our date and time uh, that Excel recognizes as a date and then we just apply a date format to it. And that date format's really kind of a mask that we're putting on that number. Uh, so the, the date is stored as a number like this in Excel, and then we're just formatting it as a date uh, to make it look like a date. So yeah, so that's how that works. So that's formulas. Uh, I know I went a little long on that one, uh, but it should really help um, evaluate those and kind of under get a better understanding of com more complex formulas when you come across something like that. Okay, cool. So next one, let me jump back here. There we go. Next one was uh, text to columns. That was another very popular uh, response, which is another good way to go about this uh, with uh, uh, text, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, text to columns. And so I have an example here of actually uh, how I went about that, but I'll step through this again, because if you haven't used text to columns yet, it's a great way uh, to go about this too. And I'm going, going to also kind of explain the pros and cons of each of these, uh, each of these methods. At the end, I have another, another sheet that you might find in that workbook there with a comparison and kind of the pros and cons of each of these. But uh, text to columns is another one we can use. We can select all of the uh, data here from A2 down. I'm gonna hit, uh, hold down Control Shift down arrow to select the entire column there. And uh, then I'm going to go to the data tab on the ribbon and we're going to choose text to columns, text to columns. So that'll bring up the text to columns window. Get it closer in there. Oops, there we go. There we go, now I can see it. So I'll bring up this uh, text to columns wizard and uh, we're going to choose delimited here. We can do a fixed width, uh, but in this case we're going to choose delimited and we're going to, and then I'll hit next, so choose delimited, hit next, and we're going to, going to choose space. So there's a checkbox here for space, and this is the delimiter. So this means that we're going to separate the values in each of these cells into different columns. That's the idea of text to columns. We're going to separate those into individual columns based on a delimiter. And the delimiter in this case is the space uh, character. So that's space character. So we can see now down here in our preview that we are going to get new columns that are all separated by a space. And this is important because if in this case here with this example, uh, all of our times have two digits for the hours. We can see 0, 3 here, 0, 9. And same with the days. So we have 0, 1, even though there's really only one digit in this day. Uh, we do get a zero one, which makes it great for that formula-based approach. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but if we didn't have two characters for the day and two characters for the hour, uh, then we'd really probably need to use this text to columns as one of the ultimate solutions because the, uh, the formulas, the mid and right formulas and all, well, the right formula would work, but the mid formulas uh, or functions wouldn't really work because we'd have a different number of characters between those spaces. So the uh, space delimiter will overcome that because it's just going to separate these values into columns every time it finds a space in the value. So it doesn't matter if we have two characters here or one character, it's going to just separate those. So we'll hit next. And this step here, we can just kind of skip and hit finish. Uh, sometimes, and a few people made a comment on this, sometimes if we have uh, a date that's stored as a text, that's stored as text, we can use this step here to actually do the conversion. So, and I should probably have another example on that. I'll follow up with another example in the future, uh, but we can use this uh, option here, this radio option to choose a date and say, this is you know month, day, year, day, month, year, and then make that conversion. In this case, we can't really use that, that feature for this step. Uh, so we're just going to hit finish right here. Just leave it as is and hit finish. And now we'll see that we get uh, this 
our date is all cut up into different columns right here. So now it's cut up into different columns. Let me just resize all these. Uh, so they're kind of cut up into different columns. And uh, now we can use formulas to bring them back together. Uh, so we have everything cut up into a column. We have our timestamps in column D, our days of the month in column C, and then our uh, month here in column B. And then the, uh, there's just weird formatting that got applied uh, to that. Um, the, I think there's some existing uh, formatting in that sheet, but this should be the year here if we go general. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there we go. So change that to general and we got the year uh, right there. So now we can use a formula to bring all of those components of our date back together. And that's what I have on the text to columns uh, sheet right here in column I. Uh, we have that formula right there, uh, which is just using the date value. Again, this is going to work in uh, US. Uh, the region should be okay, but it's going to work with the, the US uh, uh, dates only really, or the, I'm sorry, not US, the English. Uh, English formats or uh, regional settings for English, uh, this will work because we're using that date value. Uh, so we're just combining March 14 and 2017 and then adding the timestamp on the end. So we could use pretty much any one of those other uh, formulas that we saw on the formulas sheet. If we are, if we do want kind of regional independent uh, settings, then we can use that formula as well here to just combine all these back together to get a date. So another way to go about it. So let me jump over to my uh, questions, make sure <laughs> there's, uh, I'm not missing any questions. I see a lot, of, a lot of chat coming in here that I probably missed. But if you do have a question about text to columns, just throw it in the chat there uh, and I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, cool, okay, so it looks good. Yeah, great, great, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so with the um, with that kind of regional independent one too, back on the formulas tab here, in the, the formula in column D where we have all the months listed out, we can see all those months listed out right here. Another option is to list those in a cells, or in a range of cells, and then do a VLOOKUP. You can do a VLOOKUP or some kind of lookup formula on uh, that range of cells. So that's another way to go about this, uh, is instead of having that list here in the formula. Yeah, I see some questions about that. So you could do that uh, as well. This just is kind of easy because it's all within uh, one formula there, but that's another option. Okay, so next, uh, oh yeah, Lou, good question. Um, yeah, so Lou had a question about text to columns. So we go back to text to columns uh, in here, data text to columns, um, and we go delimited next. He's asking if we need to leave this checked or unchecked. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's not finding any tab uh, delimiter characters. So it really doesn't matter. If for some reason you have that checked and you see some extra uh, lines coming in, um, you can uncheck it, you know, some extra separation here between columns, but typically uh, that's probably not going to be uh, the case. Uh, so you can uncheck the tab and just use the space. You know, if you're separating by commas, obviously you could choose the comma here, and then you can also click other and, and type in your own delimiter right there. So we, if, like we could see we have some uh, colons here, so if I put a colon in there, for my other delimiter, now we can see that we're getting uh, all of our hours, minutes, and seconds separated. Now, of course, we don't really want that, so we're gonna not check that, um, but that's how those work. Yeah, if there's not, if one doesn't exist, like if I put dash here or something and there's no dash, that's just gonna skip over that. So, um, yeah, we can, that's how you can control it. And I should, also I, should, I should also mention that when we do that, this, whatever we have selected, text to columns is going to separate that particular selection. So if you wanted to keep this intact, this column A intact, and then do the separation somewhere else, just take this column and copy it first and then paste it somewhere else and then run the text to columns on that. Oops, you can't see that. Let me see. There you go. Yeah, so just, just paste it somewhere else and then run text to columns on that. And uh, that way you'll, you'll keep column A intact there. 
and you can go back and kind of check uh, your new values against the old ones. So yeah. Okay, so let's move on to Power Query. So another way to go about uh, this task is using Power Query. Another great solution here. Uh, so and again, Power Query is available in Excel 2010 and beyond for Windows. I do have a blog post that explains how to install it if you're on Excel 2010 or 2013. I have a post that explains that and um, as well as how to kind of get started with it. And then if you're on Excel 2016, Power Query is now in, on the Data tab of the ribbon in the uh, Git and Transform section right over here. Let me go jump back over there. Yeah, so it's right over here. It's now kind of renamed Git and Transform, uh, but I still call it Power Query. So one thing we can do is use Power Query to do this transformation process. And I have a query that I've output here on the PQ output tab. And so I'll bring up the queries and connections and make sure you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, so I'll bring up the queries and connections pane over here on the right and we'll uh, open this query and I'll just kind of explain it and also remember how I did this. I gotta remember all the steps. I should have wrote them down. Um, but basically we can use Power Query uh, to do the transformation as well. So we start with the source and then we can, yeah, okay, so we split it. Let me just review my work here, and then I'll explain how I did this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, we insert this, uh, merge these columns together. Okay, that's right, okay. And then date and time, yeah. Okay, so let's do one, let's do one. Who wants to do, do this from the start? So we have our uh, column of dates here, and I formatted it as an Excel table, so that way, uh, we can easily pull it into Power Query. So that's kind of one first step you'll have to do if your data is in Excel. Now you don't have to do it, but it just makes it easier if you uh, insert an Excel table first. So that's what we have here on this uh, PQ source sheet. And then we're going to go to the Data tab and choose from table. And that's going to bring up the Query Editor. It'll take a few seconds to, to load up there. And now we just have a preview of our data in the query editor here, there's just this one single column. So probably many ways to go about this in Power Query uh, as well, but what we can do is the same process of splitting the column into different columns based on that space character. So if we just select the column, and then on the home tab of the ribbon, we'll choose split column and by delimiter, and then that'll bring up this uh, window here, and we can choose what, kind, what character or delimiter we want to separate by. Uh, in this case, we want space, so we'll just leave it as space, and we're going to split at each occurrence of the delimiter. So choose that, each occurrence of the delimiter, and then we'll hit OK. And so that's going to do really the same thing that we saw in uh, text to columns. It's really not much different. It's just going to separate all those into new columns uh, by, the, by the space character. So now we have all these columns here. And really we want to now merge some of these columns back together. So instead of using formulas, we can use some of the uh, buttons here in Power Query to merge uh, the columns back together. So on the uh, transform tab right here. We have this merge columns button. Now it's currently grayed out. That's because I first need to select multiple columns. So I'm going to start by selecting the day column and then I'm going to hold the control key, select the month column and then the year column. Now these aren't named but we can see it within the column the data that's inside of them. And then we'll click this uh, merge columns button on the transform tab and uh, a separator here we can uh, choose custom, and then we can either use a dash or a slash. So I'll just type dash, and our uh, new column name, we'll call that new column name date. So I'll just type date there, and we're combining that with a dash, hit OK. And so that's going to create this new column right here called date, and we can see that we have all those components of the date combined together uh, with that dash. So let me, let me zoom in so you can see that a little better. 
There we go. So we have all those uh, columns right there. Or, I'm sorry, we have all those dates right there in, in the date column just combined together. And we'll see that we also uh, lose those columns from the rest of our query. They're just all combined together into this date column right here. So now we have the date and we can uh, convert this data type to a date. So we see this ABC, that means the date, data, or the data type is currently text. If we just right click on the column here, we'll change that type to a date and that will recognize all those values as a date and convert that to a date uh, data type. So now we have a date in that date column. So the next thing we need to do is just uh, add the time as well. So we, got, we want to put the, the timestamp into that date. So we can just keep the date column selected and then we'll hold down the control key and select the time column. And then here on the date dropdown, uh, there's an option that says combine date and time right here. Oh, you can't see it, sorry. Uh, there we go, there we go. Okay, so select both those columns. On the transform, I'm on the transform tab. And then on the date dropdown, there's an option that said combine, combine date and time right there. And click that one and that will create this new column. It's called merged with our date and time. And again, it's uh, kind of giving us this mixed reference data type. So if we right click, change type, and then choose date time, just like that, that will give us uh, the date and time as a date and time value. So now that's kind of the transformation process there in Power Query, or at least one way to go about it. There's probably many ways to go about it in Power Query, but that's one way to go about it without writing formulas or functions or anything like that. And so then we don't need these other two columns. So we could just right click our merged column, say remove other columns. So now we just have this one column and we'll call it date and time. Just double click the header uh, and then type your new, new header name in and then uh, hit enter. So we now have this one column date and time. So our transformation process is complete. And we can go to the home tab on the ribbon and click close and load. And that's going to add a new sheet to the workbook uh, with our new query. Here it comes, taking a few seconds, but I got a lot of stuff going on in my computer. So hopefully this won't, uh, hopefully this won't break everything, but we'll see what we get. Okay, yeah, cool. So there's our new sheet with our date and time output right there. And then we can use that uh, for our data set. So you might be thinking, well, that's a lot of steps to use Power Query. And you're right, the uh, Power Query is gonna be best when you're building a data automation process. Uh, so when you're building a data automation process, when you're bringing data into Excel from an external source, and you wanna do this type of transformation, maybe you have this column of, of text-based dates in it, uh, and you wanna make that transformation, maybe you also wanna delete some other columns, maybe you have some blank rows you wanna delete, and you really wanna clean up your data set. Uh, that then you can use Power Query for all of that. And the advantage there is that that process, that automation process that we just did, is now repeated with a click of a button. So if we get new data added to our data set, or we just you know, drop a new CSV file in a folder and we want to run that automation again, we've already done all the setup work, and now all we need to do is refresh the query. So that becomes as easy as just right click refresh here on that table and that would run the query again. If we had new data, it would bring the new data in uh, and do that whole process for us. So that's a really great way uh, to kind of start automating your data import process into Excel and cleaning it up at the same time. That's why it's called Git and Transform. Uh, because it's all about getting data, bringing it into Excel, and transforming it at the same time. And I, uh, I mentioned last week in last week's blog post uh, a webinar by my friend, my buddy John Michelotis and Oz Dusselet. They have a, a webinar on Power Query. So if you're interested in learning more about it, check that out. I think John was on the call earlier. He might still be here as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely check that out. They got a great webinar and a full course on all this kind of data transformation uh, techniques and, and skills and stuff like that. So really powerful tool there uh, with Power Query. Okay, cool. So that's, that's how to go about it with Power Query. Let me just make sure I didn't get any. Yeah, so, okay, cool, let me see. 
Uh, when, so, okay, Chris had a good question. Let me just make sure um, not missing any other ones. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, Chris, uh, sorry, Offense is right. It goes in the order in which you select the columns within Power Query. So let me go back to that step. Oops, I lost my mouse. Where did my mouse go? There it is. I'm going to give that a second to just load up, because that's a good question. Um, before we merged the columns, they were like this. And then the order in which you select the column, so I'm first going to select uh, the, the column that contains the day number, and then hold down control, select the month, hold, and then keep holding control to select the year. And then when you go transform, uh, merge, it's going to base it on that, the order in which you select them. It doesn't really show you that anywhere. Um, in some of the dialogues or windows within Power Query, it does show when you select that order. Uh, in this case, it doesn't, um, but that's how it works. And of course, you can also uh, see that within the formula too. So if we go down to the merged columns formula here, because really with Power Query, that those button clicks are just creating formulas. Uh, so Power Query uses this function-based language called M and uh, it's really creating formulas for us and we can see that right here in the formula bar. So that, that series of button clicks we did created all this code for us right here. Uh, and this does show the order of those column names. So here's the first column, second column, and the columns aren't named so this looks weird but it's, it's this date and text dot six uh, is the column name there. Uh, so that's what that's what Power Query is doing. Yeah. So um, you could you could actually go modify that text or that formula as well if you wanted to change the order that wasn't working. Um, but yeah, it's one way to to go about it. So hopefully that answers your question. In terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, time zone. Yeah, so that's something I did, didn't really factor into this because uh, Excel's, I guess with Power Query you can have time zones. Um, and that's something I'll, I'll have to take a look at um, and how we can add the time zone in here if that's something that you needed. Uh, because the time zones were all the same in this case, I didn't think it was as important to keep the time zone, uh, but if you did want to do some uh, translation into other time zones or calculate the difference between time zones or daylight savings and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's probably a whole nother exercise. Maybe another challenge <laughs> we, could, we could do at some point on different ways to go about that because I'm sure there's a lot of ways to do that too. I usually just do the math. Um, you know, the, number, the difference in the number of hours divided by 24 and then add or subtract that to the time. Um, but there's probably multiple ways to go about that too. Okay, so let's move on uh, to, uh, to the next one, which is a macro-based solution, which is another good option. So we had a few, um, I think we had one or two macro-based solutions. Uh, so I'm going to jump into the VB editor, I'm going to go to the data tab, I'm sorry, data tab, developer tab on the ribbon, choose a visual basic button, keyboard shortcut to alt, F11, and that'll open uh, the VB editor. So here's one that was, uh, let me see if we can make this a little bigger. Here's one that was uh, submitted by Peter, a macro submitted by Peter, uh, which is a good way to go about it. Uh, really, we're just taking the selection of cells uh, and, then we're, and then he's looping through them, uh, setting a variable for the value within the cell, and then using the split function here to split out the, uh, the value by the space delimiter. So that's what he has here is a, a space between the uh, uh, quotation marks. And we're just splitting the, uh, using that split function to split out that time uh, into an array. So that's what this is here. So that we have an array that's going to store all of those values. And we can actually jump into, uh, we'll jump back into Excel. Let's see what I have selected. Yeah, so let me just select a few cells. And we'll go back into the VB editor and step through this. So I'm going to hit F8 on the keyboard to start stepping through this. Uh, so this line here is going to just set S time as our value. You can see it right there. And then, let's see, let's move this down. There we go. Uh, and then so down here, this, this line of code right here is going to 
uh, run that split function and load an array, this VR time array, with all of those values. And we can see that in the locals window. So we go view, locals window. Let me bring it up into view here. There we go. Let's see if we can just get it here. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, so in the locals window here, uh, this VR time array. Here's all of our values that are stored within the array right here. We can see them all right here. Here's all the different values based on that space character and that split. So really we're just kind of doing the same process as text to columns, but we're doing it in memory, we're doing it in a macro. Uh, and so I'll just move that out of the way for now. So then uh, the next line of code here is just combining those back together, kind of doing the same thing that we did with the formulas. Uh, we're just combining those values back together. Let me see if I can make this a little, get that into the screen. There we go. So we're just taking uh, the fifth element. Let's see. Uh, cool, right there. So we're taking the fifth element or item in our array, which is uh, 2017. We're adding a dash, then the uh, first element, with the, which is the month, and then a dash, and then the second, uh, which is the day. So year, month, day. And then at the end of that, we're adding uh, space and then the timestamp. So combining all that back together, just those elements that we need back together into this S time, my time variable, hit F8. And then if we hover that, we can see it right there. We can see the little preview of the, the date and time value right there. That's what we got. And so then the rest of the code is just outputting that to the sheet. It's outputting that to column B within the same row, uh, outputting the value, so we'll do that there and then changing the number format as well. So we get that number format, that's the one Peter likes, and then we'll just uh, go to the next cell. So it can, continues to go, just hit, hit F5 to run through that all the way. And we can see here's our output right here within column B. So another way to go about it using a macro. And the good part about the macro is that it, you can run this anytime, anywhere. So if your company you know, or, or you're using some kind of data source where you're exporting this data a lot, uh, then you can just uh, run this macro. You can keep it in your personal macro workbook. Anytime you come across this timestamp, you can run the macro and do the conversion without having to type a formula or do that whole text to columns um, kind of procedure there with all those steps or anything like that. You know, so if you're if you just want to quickly do this, the macro is a great solution. I, I wrote another macro in here. Uh, let's see, let me go just scroll down here. Oh, we're going to not be able to see that. Let's see if I can do this. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. So I wrote another macro here that uh, kind of does something similar. In this case, I'm, within the macro, I'm using the date value and mid functions in VBA to do this as well. So instead of splitting it and then bringing it back together, really just using uh, those uh, functions within VBA. So v within VBA, we can also use the date value function. We can see it right there. And the mid function uh, and the right functions over here and then even the time value function. Let me see if I can make this, uh, put this on a different line. So we have the time value function, oops, time value function here. Uh, and all those functions we can use in VBA to do the same work that the formula does. And of course, if, you know, if you're kind of regional independent there, you can create a formula for that too uh, in VBA. And really does the same thing, just loops through all the selected cells and uh, stores this value as text, uh, or this, the cells value as text, and then does that operation on the uh, text there to create this uh, date um, variable and then outputs that uh, just using C dot offset outputs that one column to the right of the selected cell outputs the value there into uh, that cell to the right of the selected cell so you can check that one out again this you can download this file on the page uh, from last week's blog post if you just go to excelcampus.com slash blog and uh, and look at the last week's blog post there's a download section on that page uh, where you can download this file that contains the macros too. So another another solution there. All right, cool. So that's four ways, four different ways to go about it. Uh, let me see if there's any questions on the macro, and I'll kind of talk about the pros and cons of each of those. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, I don't see any questions that fully relate to this uh, VPIN. Uh, extracting unique words, um, yes, I mean, that can be done. We can use formulas for that too, something like the search or the find function uh, could be used to find words uh, within an unorganized data set. Uh, and then, of course, we can definitely use macros. Depending on the complexity of the setup, we can definitely use macros for that too, depending on how complex it is. Uh, you might be able to get pretty far with formulas, um, but if it's really complex stuff, then, then macros usually are sometimes easier because we can quickly iterate through a single cell uh, with loops. We can iterate through a single cell or all the cells on the sheet or in the range and, and do all kinds of fancy stuff. Okay, cool. So I have this sheet here in the, in the file as well that talks about uh, the different comparisons. Let me see if I can get me on screen too. Ah, oh, there I am. <laughs> so anyways, I have this, uh, this sheet here that, com that just compares the pros and cons of each of these different methods because they're kind of pros and cons to each. Like I said at the beginning with the formulas, it's probably a really good way to go if this is something you're going to do often uh, because if you're just going to add new data to the bottom of your data set, you have another column of formulas that convert the text to a date, then all I have to do is copy those formulas down. And if you're using an Excel table, then you don't even have to copy the formulas down, they're already copied down for you. So if we just go back to our example here, if we were to, or let's go to this sheet here. Uh, actually, let's go to the formulas one. So if this was all stored in an Excel table, let's just make an Excel table, Control T, or we can go data, um, oops, data. <laughs> we can go insert and then choose table control T, insert table, and make that an Excel table. And so if we were to get new data, of course, if we had new data, there would be additional columns there, not just these, these columns. But if we were to get some new data, we'll just copy it and then jump down to the very bottom of the sheet. We're going to paste new data maybe next week or something down here. Right when I paste that new data, we're getting all of the formulas calculated for us with our date value right there. Or we're just probably going to have one column of formulas with the date value but that's calculated right there for us. So that makes it uh, very fast and easy versus having to go do text to columns, you know, maybe copy the data somewhere else, run that text to columns, and then run or, or create those formulas to combine it all back. Uh, just using a formula-based approach is great. Now, formulas work in this case because, uh, again, like I said earlier, we have uh, just two digits for the day and those two digits for the hour in front of the timestamp. If we only had one digit there for anything less than 10, uh, like in this case right here, February 2nd, if this just said two instead of 02, uh, then formulas might not work as well because we're using that mid function to extract just that uh, day and uh, those two characters there. So we're going over, I think it was seven or nine characters maybe in that case, yeah, nine characters and just extracting two. Uh, but if there's only single digit, then we have to go over 10 characters and extract two and it'd just be all out of whack. So uh, in that case, we might wanna use text to columns to then separate those out by the space delimiter and use a formula to bring it back. So, and of course we can probably figure out some fancy formula to do that too. Um, so that's a possible option as well. So I'll go back to my comparison sheet. Uh, yeah, so that's really kind of the flash fill we talked about is uh, not working in all cases. I kind of just stumbled upon flash fill and, and got it to work for that case, uh, but it's, it might not work for all cases. So you definitely want to check and make sure that it's, it's working correctly if you do uh, use it. It's an uncommon solution, but uh, try it more often. It's also a very useful solution if it does work. It's very fast and you can just start typing and hit control E and you're done uh, and you don't have to do anything else. So it kind of can be an intuitive solution uh, if it works. And then we talked about the text to columns. The drawback there again is you have to repeat all those steps uh, multiple times. And then uh, Power Query, another great solution if this is part of a bigger data process. So of bringing your data in. And of course with Power Query you can connect it to your database too. So you can connect it to a CSV file that you export uh, from the system, 
or a lot of times you could just connect it directly to the system itself. I've done that a lot with uh, Salesforce being a, a source of the data, salesforce.com uh, being a source of the data, Oracle, uh, you can use just all types of different databases there, SQL databases, uh, and Dynamics, CRM, so there's a ton. You can even connect it to Facebook. I talk about that in my Power BI course, uh, connecting it to Facebook, and even web pages. Uh, so you can do all kinds of connections there, bring data into Excel, clean it up, and then output it to a, a sheet, and then you and use that sheet as a source of your pivot tables and reports and all that. So a lot of options there with Power Query, very cool tool. And then we talk about the macro too, and uh, that's definitely a very fast way to go about this. Again, if you're just opening a sheet and you just wanna quickly make that conversion, uh, you can use the macro, just a one-click kind of solution. Uh, disadvantage of the macro is you can't undo it, so make sure you save before you run it or have the output go to a new sheet or, or blank cells or something like that. But other than that, macro's a really good solution. So any other questions uh, about this data cleansing challenge? I think it was a really good uh, challenge. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Let me take myself off the screen here so I don't <laughs> stare down at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Thank you. Thanks, Amy, for, for joining us today. Yeah, I know I went uh, almost an hour here. And uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Yeah, family's doing well. I scheduled this uh, during nap time. <laughs> so, because uh, I'm at home today. So, scheduled during nap time. So, uh, we could fit everything in and no screaming in the background. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Oh, yeah, so a question on why can a macro be undone? That's a limitation really of VBA. Uh, when, and it's not that all macros can't be undone, it's just that when the macro is making changes to the worksheet or the workbook, uh, making some kind of changes like adding values to it, uh, then the undo history is automatically cleared uh, by Excel. Uh, VBA just uh, clears the undo history, and that's because it, it can't always keep up. So if you go, if you go, like in that case there, uh, if that macro is to create a thousand values in new cells, which it does, uh, Excel can't necessarily record all that, all those changes that the macro makes, and then keep the undo history for all those, because we're doing a lot of actions in a very short amount of time. Now with the macro, if you're just selecting, if you're just using the macro to either read from the sheet, uh, or select a cell or an object or something like that, those actions can be undone. So it's not to say that every action that a macro does can't be undone, if that makes sense. Um, but when we're modifying the sheet, uh, the undo history is cleared. And there's kind of ways around that, uh, which I've done with like my Paste Buddy add-in, uh, List Search add-in also has a way around the undo. Uh, so there are ways to get around that depending on how limited the action is that you're taking. Because you kind of got to store that somewhere or use the send keys method to, uh, uh, to kind of get around that too. And that's what Pace Buddy does, is use the send keys method. So, yeah, but great question though. I, I'm, I'm not sure who asked that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, yeah, good question. Is this required when charting against dates? Yes. So that's another uh, use for this, uh, charting against dates. Uh, really, if we jump back to the challenge sheet, or the example sheet here. Well, okay, how about the explanation sheet? <laughs> um, if it, yeah, so really what's happening here in column A is it's stored as text and Excel's not going to be able to create a good chart on that. It's not gonna organize that text uh, in ascending order or it's not gonna be able to group it into years or months or anything like that. Uh, if we try and sort this, sort A to Z, you can see we get all the Fridays first here. It's just thinking this is text and it's sorting it alphabetically. Um, so it's, it's just not, we can't use it for much. Uh, and same with charting it's, or a pivot table or any kind of sorting or filtering. Uh, if we look at the filter dropdown in column B, because in column B these values are date values, if we look at this filter dropdown menu, we can see here that we have the grouping from year for years and then into months. And then we can also, oops, we can also sort this column oldest to newest or newest to oldest and uh, we'll get all of that info there and it'll all work, right? So, it's, and same thing with the chart. If we wanted to do some, some charting there, 
and uh, base that on a time series or even plot those points. Uh, be much better if you have these values, these date and time values. Yeah, so great question. All right, cool. 958. Oh, I said I would also share, I uh, have uh, just a Black Friday special coming up. Quite a few people asked about that. So um, let me see if I can pull up a page. To, uh, let's see. And I just have a, a, a Black Friday special I put together for this week. Let's see if I can get this into view here. Uh, there it goes. Yeah, so I have a Black Friday special, which is a uh, three course super bundle uh, that I'm putting together which will include the pivot ready course uh, combined data with power query that's kind of a mini course on how to combine worksheets and workbooks with power query uh, so if that's something you struggle with this will be a great training on that and then the ultimate lookup formulas course so uh, combining all three of those courses together into a package uh, and that uh, package will be 297 so I'll send out an email with more info on this, or you can go to excelcampus.com slash Black Friday uh, if you wanna check out that deal. And I'm actually going to keep it up through Cyber Monday because I know a lot of people are off this week, uh, so I'll keep it up through Monday. And uh, you can check that out as well and get signed up for all those courses. So those courses cover uh, a lot of the techniques that I talked about today with data cleansing, especially in the Pivot Ready course. Pivot Ready is all about getting your data ready for a pivot table and then creating pivot tables uh, that will summarize, it could just create summary reports. That's what pivot tables do, kind of interactive summary reports and, and dashboards and all that. Uh, so Pivot Ready is a lot focused on using techniques like we saw today and Power Query and all that stuff to get your data ready for pivot tables. Very, very important skill. And then the lookups, Ultimate Lookups course um, is all the uh, lookup formulas like VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH, COUNT IFS, SUM IFS, uh, even GET PIVOT DATA, all those kinds of different lookup formulas we can use in Excel to also prepare our data for reporting and analysis. So yeah, that's that bundle, excelcampus.com slash Black Friday. If you want to check that out, I'll put, a, uh, I'll put a link there in, oops, I'll put a link there in the chat. Sorry, it wasn't as interactive on the chat, but there's a link there. You can check it out too. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm hoping to do more of these if there's something you enjoyed uh, and just let me know and uh, hoping to do more of these in the future as a way to you know, help answer your questions and kind of explain uh, a lot of these topics in more detail. Yeah, I can zoom out. What am I zoomed? Oh, yeah, <laughs> got it. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm still, still learning here. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so I put the... Uh, link to Black Friday. I'll put the link to the blog as well here. I'll put the link to the blog post in the uh, in the chat there. Let's see. Here it comes. There's a link to the blog post where you can download uh, the file. Uh, yes, I do have courses on VBA. I have the VBA Pro course. That one's not open at the minute, uh, but I do have courses on on VBA as well. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and so, oh, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so there is the, uh, let's see, that should, that should, now you should see it. Yeah, th so there's the, the Black Friday special there. Again, the link's in the chat. I guess you couldn't see it, um, but there it is there, uh, those three courses. Pivot Ready, Combined Data with Power Query, and Ultimate Lookup Formulas. So three courses there. Super bundle, and uh, it'll be 297 so save, save $154. Um, yeah, through Monday. It'll be open through Monday. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. And um, it was great to, to have you all on here and seeing all your questions and stuff. And, and again, yeah, just let me know if you enjoyed this. You could just reply to any of the emails I send out or anything like that. And, uh, and I'll be happy to help. Yeah, I don't do, uh, I don't do private training right now, PT Kuhn, but I can uh, refer you to someone uh, that does, yeah, so thank you. All right, well, for all of those in the U.S. who are celebrating Thanksgiving, have a wonderful Thanksgiving week, holiday week, all that, and, um, and all the holidays ahead. Just happy holidays to everybody. Hope you have a safe and fun time, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.